All right, let's talk about solving systems of equations by substitution, which is my favorite algebraic method. There's another one called elimination. We'll learn that next, right? I think we can break down substitution into you know, like four general things you might see, right? Once you have the general idea, you don't need to break it down. You don't need to look at one or the other. The idea is always the same. The idea is this. You're going to take one equation, and you're going to figure out what something equals, and you're going to substitute that into the other, because the idea is you need one equation with one variable because you can solve that right if you have one equation with two variables you can't ever solve it like this one here you could never solve that entirely I mean you could isolate x over y right you could get this by itself x you could get y by itself but you'll never know a numeric value for what it equals there's too many too many things it could be so you need to get these together to get one equation with one variable and you can solve it and you do that by substituting and substituting just means that you replace it right so easiest one right here <clears throat> y equals one and we have 2x plus y equals four well here it tells us what y equals it tells us that y is equal to one so what we're going to do is we're going to substitute that number in right there so we're going to get 2x plus one is equal to four right see we substituted now we have one equation with just one variable no longer do we have an equation with two variables we have an equation with one variable so we substituted it next we would simplify if we had to here we don't have to and so all you have to do if, after that is you just solve so 2x equals 3 right subtract 1 from both sides right so then x equals 3 over 2 boom done all right so now we got that all sorted out and squared away. So what we're going to do is we're going to now substitute this back in. Because remember, a solution to a system is an ordered pair. You need an x and you need a y. Right now, here's what we know. We know x is 3 over 2. So let's take this. Oh, well, actually, we don't even need to. We already know that y is equal to 1. Now let's say it wasn't that easy. We would take this and plug it back in. And we're going to show you how that works right over here. And we get into the, to the uh, not so bad area, right? But that's how it works right there. So now, next one. Let's say you had something like this. 2x plus t minus 2y is equal to 9. And here we have y is equal to this. So here we had y is equal to a number. Now we have y is equal to an expression. But we know what y equals. And we know there's a y right here. So what we're going to do, I'm going to plug it in. You have to use parentheses. So 2x minus 2 parentheses equals 9. You see, this thing is going to go right in there. 1 half x minus 1. Lots of fractions in, uh, lin in, in linear systems of equations, but a lot of times they work out pretty easy. So just be patient, right? Don't freak out. So we do have to do a little bit of arithmetic here. We have to do some simplifying. We have to distribute and then combine like terms. So we got to get these two x's together, right? Before we can solve it, got to get the x's together. Got to get all the numbers on one side, the x's on the other. So we're going to go ahead and distribute like this, right? We're going to multiply the 2 times both things in here. So this 2x stays the same. Negative 2 times 1 half, well, 2 times 1 half is 1, and a negative times a positive is negative. So negative 1x, and then plus 2, right? Negative times a negative is positive, equals 9. All right, so we're going to do two things at once right here. We're going to go ahead and combine those, and we're going to subtract 2. So 2x minus 1x is just 1x equals 7. Boom, done. So we have half of our answer now. So now we just have to take that number, plug it back into either one, whichever one looks easier, and solve it, right? So uh, we could plug that in here. We could plug it in there. doesn't really matter. I'm going to take it. I'm going to plug it in right here. I'm going to go y equals 1 half times 7 minus 1. Well, I could actually do this right here. Half of 7, isn't half of 7 3.5? minus 1, so 2.5. So y is equal to 2.5, so 2.5. We could use a fraction. We could use a decimal right there. doesn't really matter. Uh, it's working out just fine. All right, now, next one. Getting a little trickier. It's not too bad, though. The algebra is going to be a little trickier, but the actual setup, just as straightforward as these. Here's the thing that's kind of weird, though. We have both of these equations that are isolated for y. We know that y equals this, and we also know that y equals that. Well, if y equals this and y equals this, then these two things equal each other, right? If I have as much money as John and John has as much money as Abe, then I have as much money as Abe also, right? You see, that's how it works, right? 
So anyway, this is equal to that. They're both equal to y. So we're going to set them equal. All right. Now, here's the thing you might remember. We cannot get x by itself until they're on the same side of the equal sign. So we want the x's on one side. We want the numbers on the other. Uh, turns out all these are solving for x. It doesn't really matter. Sometimes you end up solving for y first. It, don't, don't get hung up on that. But here's the deal. 2x and 1x. We want to move the one with the smaller coefficient. 1 is smaller than 2. So we're going to move this x over there by subtracting it, right? And when we combine like terms, like those make 0, right? So 0 minus 1 is just negative 1. Uh, 2x minus x, right? There we go. So now we're going to subtract 3. x is equal to negative 4. So we got negative 4 for x. So now negative 4 is x. We're going to go ahead and plug that in and then solve for y. We could do it either one. doesn't really matter. I'm going to pick the second one. y is equal to negative 4 minus 1, right? Negative 4 minus 1. So y is equal to negative 5. There we go. There's our answer for the second one. So last one. This one is pretty ugly right here. In fact, this one's so ugly, I'm going to go ahead and grab a little bit of uh, an extra piece of paper so we're going to have a little bit of extra room to write here, okay? So this one is a hot mess. Here's the deal. Most of the time, if you see this one, you're going to be using elimination. But let's say that the instruction said that you had to use substitution. Well, I can walk you through this. What you're going to do is you're going to pick one of these to solve for. This x, this x, this y, or this y. Pick whichever one's easier and you're going to solve for it. I think this one's easiest because it's going to only have one step because there's no co the coefficient's one so you don't have to divide. So I'm going to take this one right here. I'm going to take that one right there and I'm going to solve this one right here. So I'm going to solve this one by adding 5x both sides. Do you see? So those reduce. So what I end up with is 5x equals, sorry, y equals 5x minus 3. Right? Now I know what y equals. Now I can take that value and plug it in right here because there's y. So 3x minus 8 times 5x minus 3 is 24. Distribute. Combine like terms. So 3x minus 40x plus Right, negative times a negative is positive, plus 24 equals 24. So negative 37x plus 24 equals 24. Then we're going to go ahead and subtract. Look what we have. Oops, negative 37x equals 0. So you could divide, but I mean, you should be able to understand that 37 times 0 is 0. X is the value, or 0 is the value that makes that statement true. So our answer for X is 0. So now we just take that and we plug it in. So let's go ahead and plug it into this one right here. All right? So take it to plug it into the first equation. That's just 0, so Y equals negative 3. So our answer is 0, negative 3. There you go. So three different ways or four different ways to go about this. But in all cases, you're going to solve for one of the variables. We could have solved for x. You could solve for y. And you plug that into the other equation. And so you end up with one equation with one variable. You solve for that variable, plug it back in, and boom, just go with it until you get both of them done. Make sure you write your answer as an ordered pair. It's fantastic. Uh-oh. Uh-oh.